What's going on my friends? I'm Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we are going to talk about um, how to use basic test equipment. So as electricians, we have a lot of different testers that we use out there. And there's tons of different reasons why we might have one tester over another or have some really, really advanced, really expensive test equipment um, versus some, you know, like cheaper things. But there's really four like essential pieces of technology that you're gonna come across. Most electricians have one or all of these on them or probably a, a mix of like three of them. Um, but these are the main ones that you need to understand. So first we're gonna start off with the digital multimeter. Now the digital multimeter, not a lot of people in like construction, we'll say, are gonna be using a digital multimeter. Digital multimeters are more for testing really precise things. If you're um, gonna be putting your tester up on a tabletop and kind of setting it up on a stand and you're going to be sitting in one place and you need to change your readings and, and you're going to be testing for one thing and then you're changing something and flipping it over and you're going to be changing uh, the values on the face to be reading different things. You might go from like capacitance to voltage to amperage to resistance, but really it's meant for like sitting at a desktop and uh, staying in one place and getting a bunch of different readings. Now, that's not always the case. And in like industrial environments and stuff, you might see guys that have digital multimeters that are just like uh, hung magnetically and that's what they prefer. That is their only meter. That's the thing that they use everywhere that they go. Um, and they're super diehard about them because they've probably paid like $2,000 for that thing. Um, so anyways, a digital multimeter, uh, basically what you're gonna need to know as an apprentice starting out is how to check voltage how to check amperage, and how to check resistance with a digital multimeter. You'll probably use it for continuity as well. So this is how we use it to test voltage. You're gonna fold the back out and put the kickstand up, set the thing in front of you, pull your two leads out, take the selector knob, turn it to voltage, take one lead, and go to one thing, take another lead and go to another thing. So if you're gonna test a plug, we'll say, then you stick one of these in the hot, you stick the other one in the neutral, and you should get 120 volts. Now, another thing is that's, that's a good habit to get into is go from hot to ground as well. Make sure you've got 120 volts there, and then go from neutral to ground and make sure that you have zero volts. Uh, neutral and ground, you should always have zero volts because they should be bonded together back at the electrical service. So they should both be at the same potential. You don't want there to be a difference of potential like we have with a hot and neutral where we have a difference of potential of 120 volts. Um, you also, since your neutral and your ground are at the same potential, you should have the same reading between hot and neutral as you have between hot and ground. Before we go any further, I would like to say thank you so much to my 480 volt members. Um, it's because of y'all that support what I do all of the time that I'm able to continue doing what I'm doing. So thank you. If you haven't joined yet, click the little join button. And on that note, if you're not subscribed, bro, why not? Come on, help a guy out. Hit subscribe, hit like, hit the little notification bell, lets you know every time I do a new episode. What else? That's really all. Man, that's, I'm not asking a whole lot. Anyways, back to the show. So let's now move into the tester. Now a tester is something that you're probably gonna use all day, every day, everywhere you go. This is gonna be in your back pocket probably more than anything. If you do construction, if you do service, doesn't really matter. Um, I can get, almost guarantee like 98% of every electrician out there has some sort of tester or seven of them. So this one has a amp clamp on it. So uh, it's a clamp on amp probe or a clamp on ammeter. Uh, the cool thing about this is that you can put this uh, clamp on ammeter over a really large conductor. So if you've got a service panel and you've got like 500 MCM or KC mill, depending on where you learned the terminology, uh, you can clamp around those big conductors and see how much current is flowing through them. Uh, whereas most other small testers are just gonna have a small jaw that you could put like maybe number two 
um, or like maybe one aught depending on what brand you're using. Um, but you're limited on your size with those. So I like having one of these clamp on style and the ability for it to clamp is really cool because you can actually hang it on things. So instead of having to hold the meter with one hand and then use the, the uh, other probe in the other hand, you can actually just clamp it, get it out of your hands, put it in front of your face, and then your hands free. You've got both leads in both hands. Now with amperage, usually when you have a clamp on ammeter, you're not gonna use the leads to test amperage around a load. Usually you're just gonna get a hold of a wire and put that thing around it. You gotta make sure if you're gonna put a wire in there, there's two little lines on the multimeter. Um, so it'll tell you that this line is kind of the optimal place for your wire to go. Try not to get it, you know, uh, out in front. It'll still give you readings, but it might just, it's basing it off of the strength of the expanding and contracting magnetic field around that conductor when current is passing back and forth. Um, so you kind of want to line it up right on that line. That's the reason they put those lines there. The next tester that you should have is a plug tester and more specifically a GFCI plug tester. You're going to test an unfathomable, can, unfathomable? Can I actually fathom? I don't think I can fathom. I can't fathom. <laughs> They're, you're just going to do a lot of plugs, man. So <laughs> throughout your time being an electrician, the amount of receptacles that you are going to install, take out, troubleshoot, put new ones in, replace, is gonna be so much. So having a plug tester on you, you don't have to get the leads and turn the little dial and get everything set up and, and try to plug in and find the right spot just to get a reading. No, you just take this thing out, stick it in, you get two little lights, boom, you're good to go. And the cool feature is that it has a bunch of different configurations. So it basically lets you know if you wired something backwards, if you went hot to neutral, or you know, like you switched your hot and your ground, or you, it, there's a whole bunch of different configurations, um, but you're gonna use this all the time. Now the other really cool thing about them is that if you get the one that has the GFCI button on it, it will actually simulate a fault condition to ground. So it will trip a GFI. Now if you have a GFCI circuit, um, you have probably, you know, let's say we're in a garage or something like that, and we've got a bunch of receptacles all over the place, and we've got one GFI device at the very beginning. Well, anywhere on that circuit that you plug this plug tester in, you can hit that button and it trips the entire circuit. It goes back to that device and trips it. Um, so it's really handy. A lot of like electrical inspectors or third party, you know, home inspectors will carry one around just to make sure that the GFCIs work or just, you know, to see if a receptacle in an area that should have a GFCI is actually GFCI protected. It's pretty clever. Um, so you're going to use the crap out of this thing just keep one on you all the time. The next thing as an electrician that you're probably gonna run into all the time are tick tracers. I don't personally use tick tracers as much as I use all of my other pieces of test equipment. Um, the tick tracer is something more if I've got like a bunch of conductors, you know, coming out of a junction box and I'm trying to identify which one is on or off. Um, I'll have somebody at a panel turning breakers on and off. And when this like beeping stops, I know, oh, they just shut it off. Cool. All right. Turn it back on. Beeping starts again. Okay. Turn it off. Beeping stops. So I know I'm on the same wire that they're on. It's more of a tool to just trace down something than it is to tell you whether or not a circuit is dangerous or not. For that, if you ever think, okay, the tick tracer just shut off it's telling me that the power's off. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick my hands on this hot wire or wire I think is off. You can still get shocked. Um, they're wrong, they kind of lie a lot. So you have to be very, very careful when you're using them. Anytime I use one, I just always pull my tester back out and I verify because I actually have readings that gives me data to know for sure whether or not there's power between one thing and another thing. So it's always smart to just double check, but it's a good tool to verify if you're ever um, trying to figure out which breakers are which, if you just landed all your home runs and you get some that aren't labeled or something like that, and you're just trying to figure out where things are, or if you're in a commercial environment, say you're up on a lift, 
and you got like nine <laughs> hot wires sticking out at you, none of them are labeled, and you're just trying to trace this one down, it's a good way to have somebody that's like in the other side of a, a, the building flipping breakers on and off to be able to tell you which one uh, is hot or not. So it's just another tool that's kind of got specific purposes, but it oftentimes gets abused and people like think um, that they can trust it to tell them whether or not power is on or off or is present or not because it's not a good tool for verifying that kind of thing that you really want to be like very sure is truth. Um, and on that note, one little tidbit of advice for any of you apprentices, even any of you journeymen, masters, anybody, if you're working with somebody, I don't care how many years of experience they have and they tell you power is off, don't listen to them. Okay, it's the one time that in your entire industry, career, time doing this, that you don't have to listen to your boss, that you shouldn't listen to your boss. And if you do, it's your own damn fault if you get shocked. I have been shocked by multiple occurrences of listening to some old fart who's 70 years old, 60 of those years he's been an electrician, and he's told me, yeah, that 480 volt circuit up in that pole is off. It's okay, go ahead and start working on it. And you start working on it and boom, you get 480 volt just explode in your face. And then he looks down and he's like, oh shit. Yeah, sorry, it was the wrong one. People make mistakes. So trust people, it's fine, but don't listen to them. When they tell you power is off, verify. You have multimeters, you have four different pieces of test equipment on you at all times. To be a true electrician, you need to know how to use test equipment to diagnose things, to verify, take readings, find results, because that's how we understand this theoretical thing that we deal with called electricity. We can't observe it, it's invisible. You know, so like we have to have these pieces of test equipment to kind of gain an understanding of what's happening. And that's the only way that we can find problems. Um, and you can't learn anything by just listening to somebody say, yeah, it's off and then just trust them. And then like bull into a China cabinet, go in and just, you know, get electrocuted. <laughs> um, so don't listen to people when they tell you something's off, pull your meter out anyways, just double check, get into that habit. You'll thank me later, years down the line when you understand after you just shocked your own helper and you feel really bad about it or you feel, or, or you laugh at first because it was kind of funny, and then you feel bad about it later. <laughs> if you haven't noticed by now, every single one of the meters on this episode say Klein on them. That is because Klein is the sponsor of this episode. Thank you so much, Klein, for sending me some testers to try out. Um, this little guy has actually kind of become my favorite, really just because there's a laser on it. Like this, you know, I use this thing everywhere. Um, Anytime I'm like lining out a crew of people and I'm in a big commercial building or something, I've got like a 20, 30 foot ceiling. I can sit and be like, all right, see that conduit, see that junction box. I need you to run that MC over to that conduit, you know, or like see over there, you run this over here. Like I use this thing like crazy. And I used to just keep this like laser distance measure around because it also has a laser. Um, but then I was just using like a measuring tool and it was bulky and it wasn't actually a laser pointer. It was actually a measuring tool. Um, so, it was kind of silly, but now that I have this, I use it all the time. Plus it's handy to have on you, especially when you're in commercial environments, because if you're coming across a whole bunch of different conductors, like I was just mentioning before, you have your tick tracer on you. And it's not just a tick tracer for like, you know, 120 volt, 240 volt stuff. It goes all the way up to a thousand volts and there's two different settings on it. So you've got the red setting, which is anything from 70 volts up to a, a thousand, which is normal, you know, line voltage. You're going to be using that for plugs and switches and stuff everywhere else. But then you've also got the blue option and that's 12 volts and up. So it goes 12 to a thousand. It'll still do everything in that range, but it also goes down to 12 volts. So I just love this little thing. Um, this is the coolest tick tracer that I have. And it's so cool that I actually do keep it on me all the time where I used to just keep the tick tracer in the truck and like only use it every once in a while. This thing is, um, is that cool? So go get you one. So anyways, that is the four pieces of test equipment that you really need to know as you're getting into this trade. 
Um, that's how to use them for their basic functions. Let me know if you guys have any other questions, if you want kind of a deep dive in either one, um, and I can kind of talk about like maybe multiple different uses for each one, um, but that's the gist of them. If you guys think that I forgot anything, please definitely leave some comments below. I love you crazy people, and I will see you in the next episode. Best Camp Music and Video.